I was wondering what your favorite Shaquille story is. You must have a good story or two from back <laughs> in the day. I have a lot of good ones about him. I'm not sure they're susceptible to be on the air, but <laughs> I, I, I do remember the first game that he was supposed to play in Los Angeles. He was ready to go and healthy. And we were going to play against the Utah Jazz. Okay, and Utah had really good teams. And I see him, and... All of a sudden, I look up, and he's walking down there on the court, and he shoves or slaps Greg Ostertag. <laughs> I said, my gosh, what in the world is he doing? And so the league suspended him for a game. I said, kill. I said, y you know, you're going to be a player that these fans are going to love in Los Angeles. And for the first game of the season at home, you're not going to play? And he apologized like he always would do. There's other incidents he went into. And I, th I think he was embarrassed by it. I really do. But Ostertag had said something about him that um, doesn't resonate very well with him. And I remember another time he gets kicked out of a game, and I go into the locker room to see how he was. And he had torn the doors <laughs> off of a, the restroom areas that – that are protected. He said to me, oh, I'll be happy to pay for it. He said, no, I want to pay for this. And I said, no, 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 you can't pay for it. But how in the world can someone be this strong to do, to rip these doors off? I, I mean, it was, it was crazy, but he, he is a fun guy, a really fun guy. He kept it light and airy. Um, and particularly in a grueling NBA season, 82 games and you know, some kids come into the league, and it's really funny, Susie. They come into the league, and their college team might lose one or two games. Hell, they might lose five straight games, and they're not used to it. So they have to learn how to participate in the league also. And uh, he was he, – he's – I don't know if I've ever had a more favorite player around than him. Taking into consideration the changes for the big men, and Shaq loves to do all sorts of like, where do I stand? Where do I fall with all of the big men in the history of the NBA? Where do you think he falls? Well, you know, I like to look at players in different eras, okay? And I think today, because the NBA has changed so much, the coaching coaching has changed a lot because they have to deal with the, uh, with the three-point line. And now Sanders has to be much more versatile. But if you put him in his prime against other centers in his prime, he would be fantastic. He would absolutely be fantastic because he is so has such quick feet <clears throat> and he was massive. And once he got his position, he was going to run right through you. But I've never tried to compare uh, players at all. Uh, in different eras, there's always players that stand out and others. But the game changes fundamentally every year uh, because of rule changes. Um, uh, Will Chamberlain, he used to dunk from the free throw line when he was in college. They cut that out. Uh, the lane, they made it wider. Now there's so many different three-point, I mean, uh, three-second calls they can make, which is a technical foul. And today that's probably going to give a team a, another point, which you don't want to happen. So the league has changed, but uh, he would do very well an era, an era, ever era that we have seen so far, but he would himself have to make fundamental change. He'd have to learn to go out in the court and play people a little bit better because of the threat of three-point shooting. But uh, I just think these great players can adjust to those things if they were still playing today. Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern, for free.